the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar, every year on, the, on every single page you will see the name of Robert Scott Wadsworth. Uh, the biblical astronomer who has been involved in a, a, in a project in, uh, as far as restoring the calendar. And also, uh, Robert Scott Wadsworth is the walking encyclopedia of the signs in the heavens. And we have Robert Scott Wadsworth who has joined us by way of Skype, and he is with us right now from Oregon, Robert Scott Wadsworth, biblical astronomer extraordinaire. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live. Well, hello, Michael. Thank you for having me on your program this evening. Well, we are very excited to, to have you with the, uh, on the program tonight. And this is something that we have got many signs in the heavens that are coming up. It's being talked about uh, the different eclipses, the lunar eclipses that are coming up the next few years. And uh, a lot of people are getting shaken up about this. They're being told that things are going to happen right on those dates. And so, uh, you know, whenever someone comes up with a new planet, Nibiru, or some mystery planet coming in and crashing into the Earth, the first person I call is Robert Scott Wadsworth because he's the man who really knows what's going on because he has st spent studying this his whole life. Uh, uh, Bob, tell us uh, about uh, what, what's coming up, and I want you to, to give people a, a, a background. We want to take them into a background of understanding what the Scripture says about the signs in the heavens. Bob? Yes, these uh, eclipses coming up specifically in 2014, 2015, uh, they happened again in 1996, 97. Uh, they're all visible from Jerusalem at that time. This time, none of them are visible from Jerusalem. I think mm -hmm. one is partially visible from Jerusalem. Only one the of the eclipses coming up uh, is, is is partially about, visible from Jerusalem. Uh, what's that again, Michael? Uh, so you're saying just one of the eclipses coming up in the next few years is actually visible from Jerusalem? Yes, it may not be. A, it's not a strong sign, but we don't know if it's going to happen this time or not. It could happen or happen, or the, you know, the end times <laughs> could start, the final seven years could start at this time, but I, I have it later on in time. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's possible that we'll start. We always look for every year for something to go on. Uh, but there's something that is happening, there's some breaking news that I'll share later that occurred, that I found today, uh, that sort of uh, basically think twice about the signs in 2014 and 2015. Well, Bob, I'll share that with you later. Okay, uh, Bob, well, let's, let's step back into Genesis because a lot of people, when they hear about the signs in the heavens, they think about astrology, they think it has just something to do with what color a purse to carry with them to work that morning. Uh, what are we talking about when we talk about biblical astronomy and the creator signs in the heavens? These are signs that were put there by the creator. Uh, it's not anything to do with astrology. Biblical astrology is not astrology. They don't tell you about your love the stars, don't tell you about your love of life, or when to go to war, not go to war, etc., etc. Uh, but the, the stars, every single constellation in the heavens, is about the Messiah and his first coming and second coming. And it started back in Genesis 114, if you want to go there. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, Malid, and for days and years. So they are for his signs and appointed seasons, and appointed times. And one of these uh, lights there is a lesser light in the e evening is the moon. And that tells us what time of the year or what time of the month it is, mm -hmm. where the feast days are held, especially on you know, Sukkot and also uh, during Passover. And it says here the light is a sign. So the first crescent light of the moon is a sign, not the darkness. It does not say that the be darkness in the heavens, let that be for a sign. So that means lights. <laughs> right. Lights in the heavens. So it's, it's, he's the God of light, not the God of darkness. The other guy is the God of darkness. So if you worship Yahweh, or Yehovah, it is the light that you see for a new moon that determines the first day of the month. Mm -hmm. Yes. Moed. And so they are for signs. And then uh, Psalm 147.4, I'll do the next slide. It would be, uh, he determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Yahweh named the stars. And all the ancient names, uh, well, actually it started with one name, then when the, when the, uh, uh, the Tower of Babel occurred, there were many languages. But all the languages 
uh, from that, all the language in the ancient civilizations, all the star names mean the same thing. That, all the names that, of the ancient civilizations, throughout all of them. That's right. Now, that, that really is a profound reality. Uh, Bullinger brought this out. Uh, who was the name of the linguist? It was a, a linguist that actually discovered this uh, uh, very thing, that all the star names, regardless of language, all mean the same things. Who was that, Bob? It was Frances Rolston uh, back in 1862. Uh, that's she right. A, she has a book titled Mazara, from Mazarot. And she's the one that, uh, that Bullinger got some, uh, most of his information from. But it was uh, interesting that all these star names, uh, the name for Earth, for instance, is Eretz in Hebrew, but in all, it means broken. And in all the, all the languages, the Scandinavian, the Arabic, and uh, the Greek, and the Roman, all the names for Earth are different than the rest. They're the same exact. They all mean broken. Everyone. Of course, we have a broken Earth. Is that is that not profound? It's like you know we say that unless we understand the the table of nations and what happened at Babylon, we cannot understand civilization on planet Earth. That's correct, and that's uh, in Genesis three fifteen. Uh, there's there's the main theme from Genesis to Revelation, and the scriptures and the uh, written scriptures. And also in the heavenly scriptures in the stars. And this is where it's the main thing in stars in Genesis 3:15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That is on the King James version, and the, and the NIV has it a little bit different. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Now there are many constellations in the heavens that show this. Uh, the main constellations, uh, for instance, Virgo is the first sign in the zodiac, not the zodiac, but the Mazarath, uh, Mazro. And the, in the slide four I have here, I have a picture of the woman with the serpent next to her, Hydra. And this is in the heavens, this is the way it always looks. So you see the struggle, this represents a struggle between the woman and the woman's seed and the serpent and the serpent's seed. And Hydra is a, is a sea snake. It is a, a beast from the sea. It has seven heads. That's the way it was portrayed in ancient, uh, in ancient the planetariums, in ancient uh, planospheres, rather. That's how it was shown with seven heads. And so you had a struggle between the woman's seed and the serpent's seed. And all the 48 constellations have to uh, go into this in more detail. Also, you have the constellation Ophiuchus, that's number five, slide number five. Mm -hmm. And it shows here a man struggling with a serpent. Now, the serpent is struggling to reach the crown with his tongue. You see that in the picture here. His tongue is going up towards the crown, trying to steal it from this represents the Messiah. He's trying to steal the crown from the Messiah. He wasn't successful. Below his feet, the left foot of Ophiuchus is coming down on the head of the scorpion. The right, and the right foot uh, is about to be stung by the scorpion stinger. The scorpion represents the enemy here. And so this is a struggle between the woman seed and the serpent seed. It's well shown in the heavens. And all these constellations show these pictures. And you can see, barely see the uh, light chalk, and you see the uh, bow with an arrow aimed at the scorpion. That's Sagittarius. The arrow of the Messiah is aimed at the heart of, his, of the king's enemy. He is aiming at the heart of the king's enemy, who is a scorpion. So all these constellations, you will find scriptures that go along with them. You have the pictures, and you have the scriptures that go with them. Uh, there's many of them. Of course, we have not time to go into them later on tonight, but uh, later on we can get into these things. Uh, Bob, now, here we have... The, uh, Bob, uh, let me uh, point out something here that uh, uh, that uh, Bob uh, taught me many years ago. That the uh, you don't look up at the heavens and see these images uh, in the heavens. They're not like outlines of images. It, Bob, is it not that the star names themselves within these constellations tell the picture of what these are all about? That's correct. Some mean feet. Some mean hands, uh, etc. Uh, uh, there's various star names and. It shows the various parts of the anatomy go. In the ancient time, they knew the pictures. I, I believe Yahweh handed the pictures down somehow to Adam or to Seth. Uh, 
that these pictures have been in existence for 6,000 years now. Most astronomers agree on this. Mm -hmm. The Greeks later came along and claimed, claimed them, but they didn't discover them. They were discovered long before the Greeks and the Romans. Yeah, that's right. And so these, these pictures were there uh, to coincide with the stars. And, yes, the stars have certain names to them. That also, they have certain names of prophecy connected to them. And it has, like, the dragons. And there's a certain star, the head of the subtle. And certain lost the bomb, that's the star, and the dragon. It means the head of the subtle, etc., etc. Now, what's going on now, they have the constellations that tell the whole story. And then when certain events occur, you have things going on in the constellations, like conjunctions of planets and comets and supernovas, and etc. And throughout history, we've had many signs in the heavens that coincide with major biblical events for the last 6,000 years, such as the, the birth of Abraham, the birth of Moses, the birth of Messiah, uh, the Exodus, and the, the captivity of Israel. Uh, all these all these events had uh, celestial signs that go along with them, strong ones. Hey, uh, Bob, Bob, we've got just uh, just one minute at this point, but could you give us a brief overview of the great sign in the heavens that is depicted or, or spoken of in the book of Revelation and what that had to do with Yeshua's birth? Well, there are many signs going on around his birth. The main sign was the, out of Revelation 12.1 that the woman is clothed with the sun and the moon beneath her feet. And that was the main sign that marked the birth of Messiah. It was probably known by the Magi from Daniel, since he taught the Magi about 500 years before. He was the chief Magi at one time. Yeah, that's right. And he most likely taught them when these certain signs were going to come about. And it was not only that sign, but there were various conjunctions that were going on before and after in Leo. Uh, that, that's right, that's uh, right. because Leo, the, the, the lion right above her head, uh, you know, the, the star between the feet of the the lion is uh, uh, what is it in uh, in uh, in Latin, uh, Bob? Regulus. Regulus, which is in in Hebrew. That Melech. means Ariah, the lion. A R I E H, Ariah. Uh, that's R I A, which is uh, for the for the lion. But Regulus is literally uh, the, the 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 king. The king, the king and it was the, correct, correct. That's the king. And, and the and the planet Jupiter, which is in Hebrew Hatzedek, the righteous came into conjunction at the time of the first sliver of the new moon beneath the feet of Betula. It's that triple conjunction. The, yeah, there you go, a triple conjunction, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, these details are in all in the chronological gospels. They are in as individual events, saying exactly when they took place. This is stuff that Bob Wadsworth worked on decades in the past, and finally now is coming out. Of course, Bob has a, a newsletter that comes out every month, and uh, tell us uh, how people can get a hold of that, Bob. It's on my website at www. BiblicalAstronomy.com. Okay, so we've got that up in the, on the, the lower portion of your screen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are welcome to, to get in with what is going on, the cutting edge. And Bob, you wrote me you sh uh, and you shared just a, 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 just a thing. You've got 15 seconds. Tell us we've got something incredible happening in the heavens coming up. We're going to have to cover it later, but tell us real quick what it is. What's happening? This is from a reliable source. I need to go into the hype, you know, hype stuff, but this is really happening. You have a huge comet coming in, probably the brightest one ever seen by anybody live, live today, and perhaps anyone ever seen in the last 6,000 years. This is a real bright comet. It'll be coming in in late 2013 to early 2014. That's, a, that's when it would be as brightest. You'll probably see it well before then. Within the next six months, probably start seeing it. They could I even put it in the year. And then uh, it will be as bright as next December and January, uh, 2013, 2014, and it's expected to be brighter than the full moon. Brighter than the full moon, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, this is going to be exciting. We're going to have Bob back on because we need him uh, to, to tell us where this is coming in. We need all the detail on this because uh, Bob gave us the heads up on other comets that came through at, at different points in time in the last 15 years, and, and, and Bob knows his stuff on this. Bob, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. We're going to have you back here in just the next few weeks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a warm, warm uh, round of applause and thanks for Robert Scott Wadsworth, Biblical Astronomer. Thank you, Bob. We'll see you. And